Blessed be God, most holy, glorious, and undivided Trinity. And blessed be God's reign, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Grant, O merciful God, that your church, being gathered together in unity by your Holy Spirit, may show forth your power among all peoples to the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Now, a new king arose over Egypt who did not know Joseph. He said to his people, Look, the Israelite people are more numerous and more powerful than we. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them, or they will increase, and in the event of war, join our enemies and fight against us and escape from the land. Therefore, they set taskmasters over them to oppress them with forced labor. They built supply cities, Pithom and Ramses, for Pharaoh. But the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and spread, so that the Egyptians came to dread the Israelites. The Egyptians became ruthless in imposing tasks on the Israelites and made their lives bitter with hard service in mortar and brick and in every kind of field labor. They were ruthless in all the tasks they imposed on them. The king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, one of whom was named Shipra and the other Pua, when you act as midwives to the Hebrew women and see them on the birth stool, if it is a boy, kill him. But if it is a girl, she shall live. But the midwives feared God. They did not do as the king of Egypt commanded them, but they let the boys live. So the king of Egypt summoned the midwives and said to them, Why have you done this and allowed the boys to live? The midwives said to Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women, for they are vigorous and give birth before the midwives come to them. So God dealt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied and became very strong. And because the midwives were feared God, he gave them families. Then Pharaoh commanded all his people, every boy that is born to the Hebrews you shall throw into the Nile, but you shall let every girl live. Now a man from the house of Levi went and married a Levite woman. The woman conceived and bore a son, and when she saw that he was a fine baby, she hid him three months. When she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and plastered it with bitumen and pitch. She put the child in it and placed it among the reeds on the bank of the river. 
His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. The daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river while her attendants walked beside the river. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her maid to bring it. When she opened it, she saw the child. He was crying, and she took pity on him. This must be one of the Hebrews' children, she said. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and get you a nurse from the Hebrew woman to nurse the child for you? Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Yes. So the girl went and called the child's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child and nurse it for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed it. When the child grew up, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and she took him as her son. She named him Moses, because, she said, I drew him out of the water. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. A reading from Paul's letter to the church in Rome. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function, so we who are many are one body in Christ, and individually we are members of one another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, 
the compassionate in cheerfulness. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was a disciple. He was the Messiah, sorry. The gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Well, I had this one professor, Dr. Grimes, when I was in college, and he was the philosophy teacher at the college, and uh, he, he looked like a philosophy, right? Long, gray beard, held himself like this. And I remember being in his class, I was a freshman, and I was ready to go, and uh, he looks at the class, and he picks on a, one person, and he says, what do you know? And, you know... It, the person froze, right? And he just went on with the class, but you know, kind of nailed that person. And I remember being at home, and my sister had him years early. She says, answer, answer this way. So I was all eager, and what do you know? At one point, he picks me out and says, what do you know? And I said, that which is knowledge. I scored, I won, I was the best. And so from there, though, it, it gave me pause that, you know, when someone asks you a direct question, like I had someone the other day ask me, what is a Christian? Uh, 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 and I'm a priest, so, you know, I'm kind of, you have to kind of gather yourself. So this morning's gospel, Jesus kind of does the same thing to his disciples. Who do you say that I am? And they choke, right? 
But he prefaces the question with, who do people say that I am? Like, what's the word out on the street? What do the polls say? Who am I? And the disciples give kind of a pat answer. Um, you're Jeremiah. You're, you know, you're a prophet. Oh, you're Elijah. And that would be the same thing as if today someone came up and asked us that. And we would say, well, the Lutherans say this. The Catholics say this. The Episcopalian. That was kind of their answer of that day. It was kind of like, who was the factions of the day? They were giving, you know, the Elijah, the John the Baptist. And so we have to remember that this is in that historical context. But Jesus was asking a deep and profound question. Who do you say that I am? And I could just imagine the, the disciples kind of like looking down at their feet, you know, no eye contact. And then, of course, Peter, impetuous Peter, blurts out, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, well, yeah, that's a good start. But who am I to you? That's a great billboard, but who am I to you? We've been wandering around the villages. You've seen me heal people, raise people from the dead, have dinner with tax collectors. Who do you think I am? What is that intimate answer that Jesus... And why was he asking this? Jesus was trying to groom these people to have heartfelt information, not head information. And this was just one more way that he was trying to get to them a who... So I'm asking you this morning, who is your Messiah? Who was your Messiah 20 years ago in August of 1980? Who was your Messiah in 1990? Who is your Messiah in 2020? What Jesus was telling Peter is, you need to know in your heart because you're going to be facing some tough things. In fact, if we le read further in this chapter, Jesus starts telling the disciples what Jesus will face, the ridicule, the beatings, the crucifixion. And what does Peter do? Shut up, Jesus. Peter doesn't want to know this stuff. And we don't either, actually. And he's just basically saying, I, I need the pretty pretty Jesus. I need the nice Jesus. I just, I can't handle it. And basically, Jesus is saying to be who I am to you, open your heart. If I'm going to be the Messiah, you have to absorb this because you're going to live it. And you have to be prepared for it. So I think Jesus was profoundly trying to get through to his disciples, look, you have to live me as your Messiah. You have to open your heart and absorb the fact that you're going to face tough things and I'm your model going forward. Now, I think today we're so torn apart and, I mean, literally our cities are on fire. California is on fire, right? We are living in unprecedented times. We have an upcoming election. Who is our Messiah? Certainly not the faction parties or con who right now can be our Messiah? Peter had to realize at that moment that Jesus was trying to say, you aren't ready. But on reflection, as Peter lives his life and Jesus is gone, Peter could say, you're the guy, you're the guy that I betrayed and you forgave me. You're the guy I walked on water and you saved me. You're the guy I saw on the mountaintop and I babbled on about, let's build a kingdom, and you pulled me down and said, stop. You're the guy I watched on the cross, but you're the guy on Pentecost I preached to thousands. You're the guy as I sat in a prison and was executed myself. You were with me. Today, the Messiah is with us. Now, we may not feel it all the time, but today, Christ is with us. During all this turmoil, you would have to say right now, if Christ were standing right next to me, what would he think of our world today? Just pause a minute 
and think about that. If I were to turn to Christ and say, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God, what would Christ say to me today? Your homework this week is to ponder that question. What would Christ say to us? Is he the Messiah of 20 years ago? Or is he your Messiah of today? And what would Christ say to us today? Amen. And now let us please together say the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and from the life of the world to come. Amen. Christ in every
And now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you and forgive you all your sins for our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, grant you eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and always with you. Pretty soon we'll be back together again. Yay. Okay, so here you go, St. Jamers, um, the announcements. So welcome to Virtual Church, and uh, welcome everyone who uh, is out there beyond our congregation. Uh, we have a virtual coffee hour at 11 a.m., and we're uh, having the host, Reverend Susan Purnell, today. So I would encourage you, pop on there, say hello, and um, greet each other in the name of Christ. Uh, we also would like to know if you would like to host the coffee hour, please email us at church, um, admin at stjamesnewport.org, if you would like to be a coffee hour host. It's very fun, so hopefully we'll have a couple more sign up. Uh, Girls Who Code has been postponed to September uh, 20th. Uh, we wanted to make sure that they could hopefully meet in a, an outdoor setting. So what we did is we pushed it till after school starts. So Girls Who Code, make sure you sign up your, your kids up for that soon. I uh, just wanted you to know that we are working, like I said Friday at my, um, e, my e-blast video, that we are working on numerous fall um, uh, programs, and they will be very, I think, very enriching to us in our Christian journey. I also wanted to let you know that we're sort of targeting right now, don't hold me to it, but September 13th of the live service out in the courtyard. We are asking our teams to prepare for that, so uh, we're seeing what mechanics that needs, but it will be social distancing, you have to wear a mask, no singing, you know, what we did before, uh, you'll have your noodles, that sort of thing, but it would be out in the courtyard with some umbrellas and actually should be a really good time. We're all clear to give the bread for communion, so we will actually have some, you know, a Eucharist also. Um, let's see, I wanted to make sure that you knew that uh, we are currently working on our 2021 budget and uh, that has been uh, sort of epic actually. You know, we're trying to plan for a post-COVID uh, you know, 19 church or do we? So uh, just know that that is in the midst. Been working with the preschool. We've been working uh, nonstop, actually. Um, even though I had a little break, uh, things have progressed. So I'm very, very excited about upcoming months ahead. God bless you as you give to St. James. This is an important ministry. Our virtual service takes a lot more time and effort. So I appreciate your generosity at this time. And God bless you as you give.
The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the world. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation. In the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in Jesus Christ, the word made flesh. For in these last days you sent Jesus to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In Christ you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In Christ you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember Christ's death, we proclaim Christ's resurrection, we await Christ's coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Savior of all, presenting to you from this creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, through whom we are acceptable to you, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with St. James and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your children through Jesus Christ our Savior, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. by Christ and with Christ and in Christ. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you have instituted for us a great sacrament in your promise of life and love, which we remember now as we hear your words again, this is my body, this is my blood given for you. Feed in us our hearts, art with faith and trust, draw us closer to you and to each other, and strengthen us for service to our neighbor. We come before you now with hearts you have fed all our lives, with the promise that you have given yourself for us. Keep us strong in that faith until we can all meet at your table once again. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of your Son, Jesus Christ. You have redeemed us and made us your people, forgiven, loved, and freed. We are your body, your hands and feet here on earth. Ours are the eyes with which you look into in the mystery of the Holy Spirit. Look with compassion on a broken world. Now take us outside this holy place in our homes to the crossroads of the world. Empower us to live and love as Christ did and give us joy as we work and wait for the final victory of eternal life. In Christ's most holy name we pray, amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you forever. Amen.
Our services here at St. James are meant to be shared, and I'm so glad you've joined us today. Hi, I'm Reverend Cindy Voorhees, a priest here at St. James Newport Beach. Every week we come together with music and a short message to help you grow in your spiritual journey. And we hope today's worship was something you experienced personally and have enjoyed the love and energy of our ministry. Everyone has been wonderful and generous during this tough pandemic. We have found new ways to worship together every Sunday, and all of you have helped make this possible, and we want to thank you. Online streaming church in many ways costs more and creates different challenges, like how do people know how to support our ministry and where to give? As we move ahead, we depend on you to do your part. So please consider making a donation to St. James Episcopal Church using the information provided below. Sharing your gifts with others will make a difference in reaching more people who truly need us now more than ever. Remember, engage your faith. God bless you and thank you for supporting St. James.